Syria crisis, war of words between Russia, U.S. heats up CNN.com. Sub edition, U.S. International Mexico Arabic. TV, CNN, TME, CNN, and Espanol, HLN. Sign up, login. Home DVN video, CNN, Trends US. World politics, justice, entertainment, tech, health, living, travel, opinion, I report, money, sports. Share this. Print. Email. More sharing. Read it. Stumble upon. Delicious. War of words between Russia, US on Syrian crisis heats up. By Greg Patello, CNN. Updated 6.21 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Friday, September 6, 2013. Story Highlights. Obama said last month that anti-American rhetoric in Russia has increased. Putin says his job isn't to please the U.S., nor is Obama's job to please Russia. Putin accuses Kerry of lying. The State Department calls the remark preposterous. A U.S. diplomat says Russia is holding the U.N. Security Council hostage on Syria. See, and, and the Cold War is over, though given the increasingly heated exchanges of late, it's hard to tell. For decades, Moscow and Washington went at it diplomatically, militarily, economically, you name it, until the 1991 fall of the Soviet Union changed the equation. Yet anyone following officials biting back and forth in recent days in what to do in Syria could reasonably surmise the two world powers are at it again. What this means for what unfolds in Syria, for relations between the two nations, and for world politics generally remains to be seen. Yet a look back at comments, since Vladimir Putin returned for a second stint as Russia's president, and particularly, as the barbs have grown testy over the past few weeks, suggests the two sides have grown even further apart. I don't have a bad personal relationship with Putin. President Barack Obama said as much in August, referring to his relationship with Russia's powerful leader. Obama, Putin together for 17 seconds. Lawmakers face resistance on Syria. Russia behind Syria's chemical weapons. Putin says he could backstrike on Syria. At the same time, he acknowledged, and the American rhetoric has ramped up since Putin returned to the presidency in May 2012. And, Obama added, he'd had mixed success trying to get Putin to think forward, as opposed to backwards in some issues. Things appeared to go differently when Dmitry Medvedev was president. At that time, Putin had become prime minister after serving his first eight years as president. Medvedev and Obama scored significant agreements in arms control and letting NATO troops get to Afghanistan through Russia. Yet the atmosphere changed noticeably after Putin, a former KGB operative, resumed the top position in Russia's government. There were diplomatic flare-ups in everything from espionage to human rights to the adoption of Russian children. One point of strain has, in many ways, the potential to have the biggest global impact, what to do about a civil war in Syria that has left more than 100,000 dead and 2 million refugees, especially given allegations from both sides about chemical weapons use. Obama hasn't been elected to be pleasant to Russia. Putin made this comment earlier this week, before Obama and other leaders arrived in Street Petersburg, Russia for the G20 summit. His point, it seemed, was that the chief goal of neither he nor Obama is to ingratiate themselves to each other or please each other's citizens. Both men were elected to serve their own populaces, and if they end up throwing some elbows along the way, well, that's how things go. Not that the two can't make nice. Obama said their conversations are often candid and very productive and when they met Thursday before reporters in Street Petersburg, the two men smiled as they chatted and shook hands. But none of that changes the fact that in the big issue of the day, Syria, the two are far apart. Moscow and Washington have been at odds since 2011, when the Damascus government first cracked down on protesters. Since then, the dispute has spiraled into a full-fledged civil war pitting Syrian government forces, who, at times, have lost control over large 